All right, today's talk um, is about practice and uh, specifically Matsu's instructions that ordinary mind All right, today's talk is the way. Um, All right, so Matsu says, ordinary mind is the way. So before I begin, I want to give you a little bit of a context from my, my, my talk a couple, a few weeks ago. And I wanna share a few slides because that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's where I'd like, to, I'd like to pick up. I'd like to pick up where I left off a couple weeks ago. So here you are in your practice and you find yourself um, falling down, failing. And uh, it may be when you're on the cushion or maybe in your daily life. And as you get up, you go, well, duh, there I go again. And uh, it's frustrating. You're frustrated and you feel like a, like a failure. So um, that's, that's what your practice looks like to you. But in the eyes of the Buddha, you're doing exactly what needs to be done. In the eyes of the Buddha, you're like a toddler that of course is going to, you know, stumble, bump into things, fall, get up. It's all a part of learning to walk. And in the eyes of the Buddha, like in the eyes of a parent, um, there is no doubt that uh, the walking, it would happen. It is uh, inevitable. If we can look at ourselves with this perspective, then practice can really, really be transformed. we realize that our nature is Buddha nature, that the radiance of Amitabha does not exclude us. So Amitabha means infinite light. It also means infinite radiance. So there is nowhere that that infinite radiance does not reach. It's not as though somehow we are excluded from it. So our nature is Buddha nature and we are part of the Buddha mind. And as such, we are a part of the a perfect functioning of the Buddha mind. So in order to get to ordinary mind, ordinary mind is the way, we've got to make peace with our nature as a bumbler, as a person who is standing up and falling down, standing up and falling down, while at the same time having faith in our Buddha nature. So our practice may look like we, we fall down and we get up and we have two options. One, we recognize ourselves as a suffering being and uh, what is seeing the suffering being is the awakening mind, is bodhicitta. Or two, we can judge ourselves and what is judging is prapancha citta, is the scattered mind. And the difference is a matter of life and death. It is a matter of choosing the Buddha from moment to moment, or choosing um, to go away from the Buddha. Is it, you know, it could be more suffering. That is that is 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 what the difference is. So, in our practice, it is very helpful if we can get comfortable with our suffering being. If we can recognize when we are greedy, when we are angry, when we are oblivious or ignorant, as just many flavors of a suffering being, because what is recognizing 
the suffering being is an awakening being, a bodhisattva. All right, so that's kind of the, the, the little bit of a background uh, from which I want to go into ordinary mind is the way. That is a practice instruction from Matsu. And Matsu is a common instructor to many of our, um, you know, uh, is, 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 Matsu is considered to be second only to Huinang in, um, in the impact that he had on Chan. So, um, so Matsu says, ordinary mind is the way. And you're probably aware of another great saying from Matsu, where he says, just this mind is the Buddha. Just this mind is the Buddha mind. The mind that you use right now is the Buddha mind. And um, um, in the second, second uh, principle in Matsu's thought is the ordinary mind is the way. And uh, just an excerpt from The Mind of Chinese Chan by Dr. Yi Wu. The way does not need to be cultivated. This is, this is Mao Tzu's words. The way does not need to be cultivated. It's only important that you do not stain your mind. What is a stain? When you have the mind of life and death and have a desire to do something, this is a stain. If one wishes to understand the way directly, ordinary mind is the way. The ordinary mind is without any action, way, without right and wrong, without attaching and renouncing, without extinguishing and constancy, without common people and sage. This is such a tall order. I'm going to read that again. So this is Matsu's instructions. So he is He's explaining what this ordinary mind is. It's ordinary. It's so simple. But then it's not quite as simple as that. And he's talking about it. And, and we are going to get to how to practice because that's, that's the most important, important, um, important thing I want to talk about today. So um, he says again, the way does not need to be cultivated. It's only important that you do not stain your mind. What is a stain? When you have the mind of life and death and have a desire to do something, this is a stain. If one wishes to understand the way directly, the ordinary mind is the way. The ordinary mind is without any action, without right and wrong, without attaching and renouncing, without extinguishing and constancy, without common people and sage. So when you read this, you might be um, motivated to somehow practice the mind of no stains, right? You say, okay, no stains now. But he also says that it's without any action, right? And he's like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a mind without stain, but there's no desire to do something because a desire to do something is a stain. So that's like, oh, well, what am I supposed to do now, right? And it's a mind without right and wrong. So uh, in, in that slide that I shared, uh, you know, uh, it's a judging mind we're talking about. The mind of right and wrong is a judging mind. In contrast to the awakening mind, the mind of a bodhisattva that simply recognizes suffering. So if you find yourself suffering, simply recognizing suffering, that is the awakening mind. So, and Matsu further says, all actions such as walking, dwelling, sitting, sleeping, and responding to things are the way. All right. So, um, so 
Mazu says, when you're hungry, you eat. When you're tired, you go to bed. But then, all you know, this is another quote from, from uh, Dr. Yi's, Yi Wu's book. Although eating and sleeping are ordinary things, they are not simple things because we don't, our lives are too complex. We, 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 don't, we, we don't just eat when we are hungry. We don't just go to sleep when we are tired. You know, and, and, you know, and if, if you just go tell somebody that, uh, um, you say, you know, I wish, I wish I could just, you know, eat when I'm hungry. I wish I could just sleep when I'm tired, but my life is more complex than that, right? So, um, so uh, may not be as simple as that sounds. So, uh, so I, I really want to get into how do we put this into practice? What does it mean to, to put, put this into practice? So um, one of the most important things about practice is that it's about your next step. It's not about the goal. Right view is about the goal. Right view is very important. But when it comes to practice, practice is about the step that you are on right now. So I have a quote from, um, from actually the preface to uh, Shunryu Suzuki's Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, where the, uh, where the um, editor, the pref the, whoever wrote the preface, talked to uh, Shunryu Suzuki and, um, and you know, uh, uh, they draw a contrast between Shunryu Suzuki and DT Suzuki's uh, approaches, where DT Suzuki's Zen was dramatic, Shunryu Suzuki's is ordinary, ordinary mind. And um, so Satori or enlightenment was focal for DT Suzuki. Um, but for Shunryu Suzuki, you know, he didn't use those words so, so often. So, and, and the, uh, the, the, the writer had an opportunity to ask uh, Shunryu Suzuki, why, you know, he didn't emphasize Satori or the enlightenment experience, uh, the realization experience so much. And, and uh, Suzuki's wife, you know, jokingly said, it's because he hasn't had it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, whereupon the Roshi batted his fan at her in mock consternation and with finger to his lips said, shh, don't tell him. When our laughter had subsided, he said simply, it's not that Satori is unimportant. It's not the part of Zen that needs to be stressed. And, and Gilbert often says, if you've got like one eye on, en on enlightenment and one eye on your method, you're not gonna get anywhere. So it's the same thing. So when you're practicing, you just practice. Just like when you are walking, you just walk and that is practice. When you're, when you're eating, you just eat. It's as simple as that. And, 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 and um, if where you're at, it feels very far away from that. And, and your, your circumstances in life may quite be that when I'm tired, I cannot sleep. You know, I have a child to feed. I have, you know, a project to do at work in order to, I can't just drop it because I have to pay for rent, you know, whatever else. So, so it may not be your life, your life may not be that simple, but you could start somewhere, somewhere in your daily life where when you're walking, you just walk. Um, maybe it is the walk from your car to the office every day. Maybe it is Maybe it is um, a cup of tea that you have, but when you're drinking tea, you just drink tea. So maybe it is that small little sliver because, because while practice is gradual, it's also sudden. It, it, you know, on one hand, the practice adds up. You know, if, if you have a few moments like this, they, 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 they string, start to string together. 
Robert talked about that, how it just his work, day just flows like that a couple of weeks ago. So it, it starts to string together like beads, you know, a bead here, a bead here, it just starts to string together. That's on one hand. On the other hand, no other moment, there is no other moment but this moment. So there's no other, you know, no other moment is needed than this moment. So just this moment, just this. Just this mind is a Buddha mind. Just walking while walking, drinking tea while drinking tea. So practice is about the present. Practice is also a verb. So uh, Tegan Dan Layton in his book, Justice it, Is It, uh, about Dongshan. Dongshan is one of the ancestors uh, for, him, for whom uh, the silent illumination school is named Cao Dong. Uh, the Dong is Dongshan. So uh, in that book, uh, Dan Layton says, in actuality, there are no nouns, but all words and supposed entities are verbs or adverbs. So in actuality, there are no nouns, but all words and supposed entities are verbs and adverbs. It's activity. When we need to talk about it, we put a, put a, put a word on it, put a, put a word to it, and we make it into a noun. And uh, he says that this is perhaps somewhat easier to express grammatically in Japanese than in English. So, you know, he's translating from Japanese and he finds that it's easier to, to read the words as, as happening uh, verbs in, 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 in Japanese than in English. And perhaps that is similar in Chinese. It would be good good to hear but uh, let me just read this and maybe maybe ask uh, you know Chinese speakers here for comment this grammatical disclaimer is most important in not attaching to suchness as an object to grasp but rather seeing such reality as a mode of practice of meditative awareness and activity ultimately there is no such thing as suchness and similarly no such thing as emptiness Emptiness is not a thing to seek, but rather the way a thing is. A way things are experienced. So uh, this can give you a little bit of comfort. It's not as though you're here and enlightenment is far away. I, I, I want to use the word awakening. Awakening is far away. No, the, it's a process that's available right now. It's as though it's as though you are in a building and you don't know that there is a foundation, but the foundation is there all along. So it, it's 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 like that. And um, so, does anybody want to say something about uh, verbs and nouns in the Chinese language? Anybody wants to comment on it? No. Nope. All right. Oh, there you are, Robert. Okay. Can, can you pronounce? Is 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 there a pronunciation somewhere that you can pronounce it so that maybe I can guess what the words they were using? Oh no, this was not. It, it, this was no. not a translation. This was more like he was just mentioning that. Um, you know, when it comes to when it comes to concepts, we reify um you know we reify everything around us as though it was a thing but in reality everything is a process so if i look at this this water bottle it's a process it's a it's a process at some point it was made and even now it is changing it looks like it's the same from day to day but it's actually changing and over a period of 50, 60, 70, 100, whatever the years may be, it's just gonna, you know, break down. So it that, that water bottle is a thing, but it's a process. So um, what we do is often we put a name to something and we assume it to be 
more permanent and more um, independent than it actually is. When in reality, it is inter interdependent, it's relative, it's relative and it is impermanent. So verbs have a way of conveying that better than nouns. And um, uh, Dan Layton was saying that in Japanese, it's easier to read the text as verbs rather than nouns. So that's what he was, he was saying. Yeah, go ahead. It, it, it sounds like it's almost like water that, that is constantly flowing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so habitual that the normal sentient, like me, uh, we so habit, it's just such a strong habit to always try to stop everything and, and say, this, this THIS is like trying to fix everything to be mm -hmm. still and then and trying to make a definition of something. But in reality, everything is uh, a word we always use is not uh, impermanence. It's like everything is constantly changing according to causes and conditions. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no this, everything is changing. Just mm -hmm. like your water, water bottle is in the process of being decay in, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a one million year kind of perspective. Mm -hmm. It's going to be little micro plastic eventually. And yeah. go back in the soil, go back into the wherever, into the mm -hmm. earth. And someone will mine it a few minutes years ago, become oil, and then who knows, it become gasoline again. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, in, in, in some of the Chinese texts that we, we read, it's like uh, wu, wu chang. Wu chang is the pronunciation. It, it actually equates to never, never constant, mm -hmm. never still, or never constant, or never always. There's no such thing as always. Mm -hmm. It's forever tumbling and changing and 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 morphing it's morphing. like a butterfly like mm -hmm. a butterfly just keep changing mm -hmm. yeah Thank so you, there's no point being fixated and mm -hmm. say it got to be this way it got to be that way it got to be yes. my way <laughs> mm -hmm. thank you so so practice is a verb and and it goes this goes with practice is in the present so um so um if you can recognize the verbness of whatever is happening then you're closer to ordinary mind so um sally b king says um this is you know she says the zen saying that everyday mind or ordinary mind is Buddha mind closely fits the Buddha nature theory pattern. For example, the 8th century Chinese master Ma Tzu says, all of, all of you should realize that your own mind is Buddha. That is, this mind is Buddha's mind. As in Buddha nature thought, since the defilements are not real, there is nothing to inhibit the immediate identification of the present deluded mind just as it is with a perfectly enlightened mind of the Buddha. Okay, I'm going to read that again um, because I, you know, I, I came across this quote after I did the presentation before when I said that recognizing the suffering mind is the awakening mind. That's what she's saying here. As in Buddha nature thought, since the defilements are not real, there is nothing to inhibit the immediate identification of the present deluded mind, just as it is, with the perfectly enlightened mind of the Buddha. So it's not like you have to clear away all of the, you know, the defilements, clear the anger, clear the greed, clear the ignorance before you can 
before before getting to the awakening mind. Recognizing the suffering mind is already the awakening mind. Um, there is another saying, knowing the arising mind is the non-arising mind. So in that, there's a bit of a... Uh, it's a bit of a pressure on you. It's like, okay, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to catch every thought before, you know, before it builds up. You have to catch the, you know, arising mind in order to get to the non-arising mind. So, I, the way I'm trying to phrase this is recognizing the suffering mind as, oh, this is suffering. That is the awakening mind. So, not so much pressure. The moment that you recognize suffering is is fine. That's fine. At that point, there is the awakening mind. Michael. Uh, somebody had a question. Uh, Jan, you cannot unmute or raise her hand, but oh, um, he's. Oh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to wait uh, to uh, Sansa to uh, Sansa to 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 pause. So thank sure. you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So can I ask a question or is Yes, it... absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, um, when you talk about um, there's only um, um, verb uh, or adjective, um, there's no noun, then um, I understand the, the process like a uh, rubber said, but um, um, I, I feel like I, I, I kind of like a question about like, Adjective. Mm -hmm. Adjectives, is okay. adjectives are, are judgments, are the right or wrong, right? For example, if you are to say, oh, you're lazy, right? That's an adjective that you're saying that somebody is wrong. But if we, uh, we, we have a thought about uh, adjective, like good or right, uh, good or bad, right or wrong, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. we already have a noun. Right. Otherwise, how can we, you know, how can we give that thought like good or bad? Right. Or, so, or right, so, or right or back. Yeah. So, so the key here is to, it's not like, it's not like saying that, oh, to think of something as good or bad is bad. Therefore, don't think of it as good or bad. So that there's, there's a bit of a, um, there's a bit of it's 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 subtler than that, and there's a bit of skill involved in looking underneath the good or bad. Looking underneath the it's it's you know your 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 first instinct is to say this is good and this is bad. To look underneath it to say how did this come about. So to look underneath it to see the causes and conditions. So it's like peeling back one layer, and and as a practice, as you peel it, peel it up, peel it up, and see what is underneath it, then, um, then you know you'll find that you're not thinking in terms of good or bad as often as you used to. So the, it, it's it's almost like a. Uh, not thinking of good, not thinking of bad. At just that moment, what mind is it? That's Huinang's, um, that, you know, that's what, you know, that's the, that's what, that's, that was Huinang's practice instruction. And you should absolutely use that practice instructions while you're on the cushion, and maybe even when you're up and about, right? And to keep, keep as, as a method, to not go to good, not go to bad, to just just be right there. However, when you're when you're when you're out and about in the world, you're not in the you know there are there are times in your life when you can just practice. Like like I said, you're walking from one place to another. You're drinking a cup of tea. All of those times, you could practice something like this without thinking of good, without thinking of bad. Just what it, at, at just such a time. What mind is it? Um, but say you are in a, in a situation where you're like, you know, somebody did something and you're really upset and you're saying, oh, that person is so 
careless, right? Or, or you, you're putting a good or bad adjective onto that, that person, right? At, at that time, while you could like reel back and say, oh, you know, no thinking of good and no thinking of bad. While that's possible, right? It may not always be appropriate because there's something that needs to be done. And there is a danger of um, suppressing our, um, you know, suppressing whatever is happening. So for instance, just shutting down, oh, I'm not supposed to think of good or bad. So that's not what we are after. So you, you, there is an option to like peel back and, and see where is this coming from, to be, uh, to be curious and to recognize the suffering being. Oh, it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hurt by whatever that person did to recognize that suffering, suffering being right now. And probably that, that person, if they did something mean, that person is probably suffering as well. So recognizing the suffering is, um, is the awakening mind. Suffering mind is the awakening mind. So, um, what, you know, tell me, tell me how that landed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, yes. Uh, that, that is, um, uh, the practice way. Um, uh, I guess my question um, is about um, at the earlier you talk about you know um, there's no noun only uh, verb and adjective. No um, adverb, verb and adverb. adverb. Adverb, okay. Adverb is like uh, like adverb going adverb. going fast. Yeah, going fast. That that's an adverb. Fast, fastly, fast. Okay. Um, I guess okay. that, that explains, yeah. Sorry, okay, <laughs> got it, okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so, um, so, so Sally, Sally B. King uh, is talking about how, um, how recognizing the suffering is the, the, the awakening mind, she, words to that same effect. And she says, let it be noted, however, that this mind is Buddha or Buddha nature, not as a thing which sees and knows, but exclusively in the seeing and knowing. That is the acts themselves. So she is going back to that, that verb um, as well that uh, Dan Layton talked about. So I, I'm going to repeat. Note that this mind is Buddha or Buddha nature, not as a thing which sees and knows, but exclusively in the seeing and knowing. That is the acts themselves. Now, while, while this is true, um, when we talk, we have to use words, we have to use nouns, that's the structure of our language. But when we practice, you know, it's good to, to be aware of this. And, and further, she says, the mind or Buddha nature is not a thing which perceives, but the act of perceiving itself. And there's something very important in this. Uh, the, it's not the thing which perceives, but the act of perceiving itself. Um, it's that every moment is perceiving that's happening. So every moment, it, it's, it's like it's like in the building there's a foundation that's there it's just not seen it's just not recognized but every moment it's it's happening every moment Buddha nature is happening mind is happening that's such a weird way to say that but it is happening every moment so, you know, the building has a foundation. It's there. It's just not recognized. So that, that tells you how close it is. That is there every moment. It, it, it's, it's not far away. It's, it's right there every moment. 
Okay, and practice involves faith. D.T. Suzuki in his book, um, Buddha of Infinite Light, he talks about the entrusting mind. I really like that word entrusting mind because it's a verb, entrusting is a verb, right? And he says, this is what distinguishes religious life from ordinary worldly life. In the relative life, we want to know beforehand all that may come about as a result of doing this or doing that. Then we make our move expecting a certain outcome. But in religious life, we accept and know, and at the same time, live that which is beyond ordinary knowledge. Thus, knowing and living. Living becomes knowledge and knowledge becomes living. This is the difference between religious life and worldly life. Yet, there is no such thing as spiritual life distinguished from worldly life. Worldly life is spiritual life, and spiritual life is worldly life. So he's writing this book, um, and this book in this book, Aditi Suzuki is writing about um, um, the Buddha of infinite life, Amitabha Buddha, and he's talking about the practice of reciting Amitabha Buddha's name. Um, but of course, you know, his perspective is beyond just like, oh, just entrust uh, and have faith in the Buddha. So that's why he's talking about how, how um, it's not worldly life is not different from religious life. But, but truly there is, you know, the, the distinction that he's drawing is that um, is what Gilbert talks about, like you don't have one eye on the uh, on awakening and one eye on the method. That's that's not really practice. So he, that's what he's talking about. That in our daily lives, we do, you know, we do, um, what does he say? We want to know beforehand all that may come about as a result of doing this or that. Then we make our move expecting a certain outcome. So that's what we do, and we get disappointed when that out outcome doesn't happen, um, and and that's that's all a part of life. But in the religious life, we we accept and know, and at the same time live, which is beyond that which is beyond ordinary language. So he's talking in in religious life. You know, we are we are knowing and living. Living becomes knowledge. Knowledge becomes living. So it's like a it's that flow. It's a flow of what is and what has to happen. It is, a, it is the following of function and um, seeing, seeing what is, right? It's, 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 a, it's not that, oh, you, there's a moment of seeing what is and there's a moment of uh, activity, uh, the activity that is seamless and activity that is um, perfectly aligned with causes and conditions. These two things are happening at the same time, right? That's the, the flow. Um, and, and, and he talks about this, uh, this entrusting mind because faith practice involves faith. For, for there to be this ordinary mind, this ordinary mind of just walking when you're walking, talking when you're talking, for there to be that, right? There's an element of faith. Because um, while you may be working towards an outcome, there's simultaneously a letting go of any attachment to that outcome. And that doesn't quite happen without faith. And the faith may be faith in mind, which is faith in pratitya samutpada, with faith in how, how mind works, well, how causes and conditions never fail. Causes and conditions never fail. There's faith right there, right? That's faith in mind. And faith in mind can be, um, you know, it doesn't have to be there from the beginning of practice, but as practice proceeds and um, the, as the fruits of practice are what... Um, or, you know, when practice is actually working, 
then there's an opportunity to develop faith in mind. And with faith in mind, practice becomes more effortless and practice becomes more more fruitful. So that's that's faith in mind and it can, it can slowly develop. It could be faith in practice, right? That that could just be all all that all all the faith that you're able to uh, to generate faith in practice. Practice works. So there's faith in practice. It could be faith in Amitabha Buddha, right? And it could be faith in Amitabha Buddha um, as the source of uh, infinite radiance from which you're not excluded, just as you are, just as you are with all of your defilements, you're still part of the Buddha mind. It could be faith in Amitabha Buddha, as as uh, mentioned in the in the in, in Amitabha Buddha's the sutras, where you know which talks talks about uh, Amitabha Buddha's vow that if if only uh, someone were to say Amitabha Buddha's name with uh, sincerity, then they are guaranteed a spot in the pure land, right? So um, what that is saying. You could, you know, one way of looking at it is to say that, hey, don't worry about the fruits of your practice. Just practice with sincerity. Just practice with sincerity. Leave the fruits to Amitabha Buddha. That's what it means. Now, if you if you can have faith in Amitabha Buddha, that's great. If you can have faith in another Buddha, that's that's great. Of whatever name, that's great. But if you can have faith in faith, that's good enough. That could be faith in practice. It could be just faith in faith. Basically what it means that when certain things are above your pay grade, you just say, it's above my pay grade, right? So you're playing a ball game and all of a sudden the ball is feels like the weight of the world. Pass it on to Amitabha Buddha, right? Pass it on and then, you know, move on. And when, when the ball comes to you, then <laughs> it'll be easier to handle, okay? So, so having faith in faith means that um, you don't take on more than you can handle. You do the, you do the next step and you don't um, worry about the goal. You leave the goal to Amitabha. You leave the goal to the Buddha. You leave the goal to Pratitya Samutpada, the perfect functioning of the of the Buddha mind. Right? You have faith in mind, faith in Amitabha Buddha, faith in practice, faith in faith. But faith is really, really important because it is what allows you to let go and to be in ordinary mind mode. Because to be ordinary, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. In order to be ordinary, you have to let go of, of the things that burden you. You have to put it down somewhere. And Amitabha's lap is a good, <laughs> good one to, to put it in. Pass that heavy ball to Amitabha Buddha. Carry on. And when it comes back to you, you'd be able to handle it. So faith is a really important part of practice because faith is what can let ordinary mind be ordinary. Wendy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me address this faith <laughs> which I lack. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably, uh, okay, so tell me, don't take more than what you can handle. But, mm -hmm. uh, but you gotta, you gotta, you know, you, like I, you kind of have to uh, have to work, have to make money, make pay bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's more than I can handle, but you know you kind of have to carry on, right, in life. Yeah, but what what is real really the burden? Is it is it is is the burden coming from you know going to work, or is it is it 
is it is it about worrying about something while going to work yeah. so that you, know, you have to realize what it, what is the burden the burden is not coming from doing the work next thing that is it's not it's not coming from taking the next step the burden comes from worrying about the outcome right right yes 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 so that that's the outcome that you tossed amitabha buddha that's the heavy ball that you said you that's your job you amitabha buddha <laughs> that's what that's what he's saying he's you know in his vow he's saying you know don't worry about enlightenment don't worry about awakening i've got it right well i so, don't worry about that i think that's no so no, no. In, in this case in, in your very worldly case you don't worry about you know how exactly the the work that you're doing is going to translate into you know a raise or whatever the worldly thing that is that you're worried about that you leave okay okay so um yeah i guess i i miss that that's why i'm so anxious so because i i i want to know i want to know how <laughs> how it's going to be right but mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, the more I want to know, the, the more I'm anxious and worried and it, the worse I get. Mm -hmm. more, so, so it just kind of, people say, say relax, relax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but let, letting go is not simple. That's why faith can be a really important component of letting go. Because you're not just letting go. You're just, just you're giving it up to somebody who knows better it's it's, it's like you it's like you're like okay you're giving it over to the buddha that's easy compared to like oh just let go don't worry if if you can do just let go don't worry that's great that's awesome but if it's not that simple then you know just practice practice letting go to the buddha practice um practice Entrusting, entrusting mind, entrusting mind that uh, D.T. Suzuki talks about. So it, it's not, it, you know, so do you need to have faith in Amitabha Buddha or the Medicine Buddha? You know, if we have this Medicine Buddha is really Amitabha Buddha, the vows he made were about enlightenment, about awakening. Medicine Buddha, the vows he made were about, you know, helping you with your daily worldly life and if you can have faith in a buddha that's great but if you can have faith in in practice that's fine if you can have faith in mind that's fine if you can just simply let go without faith that's fine but letting go is important and it's easier to let go by saying i entrust right and it, it takes it, it, you know, I entrust in mind itself. It takes a little bit longer. It takes more practice. And it, 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 it takes right view. But if along the way you can say, I trust in the Buddha, that's fine. And in a Buddha of whatever name you may want to, um, you may want to, that, that you, you, you're able to place faith in. Robert. Yeah, uh, when I first heard the word uh, Pratitya Samuprada causes and condition about four years ago, it, it is such a concept, very difficult for an IT person for 40 years to comprehend causes and conditions, trying to, I came, I was so far from trust, there's more doubt and more analytical aspect is like, what is causes and condition? And over the last four years, when I heard Gilbert one time say, Buddha is Pratiya Samuprada. Mm -hmm. Mine is Pratiya Samuprada. And, and again, it's like a stick that hit on my head that I further, it hit me so hard that it took me several months to, to crack this this nut is it's almost down to the point that it's that vow that I made when I 
when when sometimes come to the class, we we do the four great vow. So the vow. I forgot I, today. Oh my gosh, I did forget. Sorry. Yeah, the vow is so. <laughs> the vow is so important. Yes. <laughs> it is so important. <laughs> and because I made the vow and I'm sincere about making the vow. Mm -hmm. So slowly, faith somehow grew. Somehow it grew, and somehow I begin to believe. Put my faith on Patiya Samaprada. It is a very, very long word I can't even pronounce, but but I begin to kind of like you say, give it to Buddha. But I give it to Patiya Samaprada because I begin to see things happen. The way it is is like. I probably cannot do anything about what just happened. I just have to let it go, mm -hmm. and then just let it be, and somehow things will work out. Sometimes it's not to my satisfaction, but still I learn to accept it. I mean, the the word "accepted" is so difficult to get to that word "accepted." So yeah. often, in the beginning, in fact, the last fifty years, I never accept whatever turned out. I'm never happy. I always say, "Why not this? Why not that?" But, but putting, giving it to Buddha, and let Buddha worry about it. Is like let Pratya Samuprada take the course. Let it, let it, give it, give, give it the steering wheel. Let it mm -hmm. drive. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I just sit back. Yes. And I just live my life. I just live my life. Oh, oh, it worked out. Oh, good. Oh, mm -hmm. it doesn't work out. Oh well. Something yeah. must be better. Something must be better, better around the corner. So, mm -hmm. so it, it took several years to. It's like when you mentioned today, the entrusting mind, the entrusting verb. It takes time to slowly, kind of nurture this little seed. It, yes. You you don't grow to a big tree of entrusting tree. No, you grow from a little, little, little seed. You just have to put some water mm -hmm. and practice, and slowly this this germination will happen. It, it just yeah. takes time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Robert. And and thank you. And and you know, my own journey was faith in mind before faith in the Buddha. So however it works, faith is important though. And that faith can build like slowly, like that little 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 sapling you know little little seedling it can grow slowly that's okay but it's suddenly it's a tree right suddenly it's a tree and suddenly it's giving shade to others so so all of that would happen and it's a it's a it's a it's a perfect functioning of causes and conditions especially the cause that you put in effect through your vows and um, that faith is very important. It's a very important part of practice because without faith, you cannot let go. So if you find that you're not able to let go, you know, maybe you think that, hey, what is missing is that entrusting mind. And the entrusting mind can entrust in, in, in the nature of mind itself in Pratitya Samutpada, in Amitabha, in the Medicine Buddha, faith in faith is fine. Right? So that's 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 very important. I've got a couple more couple more um, key uh, things I want to convey about practice. Practice is effortless. So on the one hand, we practice and we practice, you know, we, there's, there's this, all of this like practice as though your head was a fire, right? You have that kind of a practice. But really, virya the, of the six paramitas, the six uh, perfections, virya is glad effort. So the effort is like happy effort. It's joyful effort. And it's balanced on the other side by the other, another um, of the six paramitas, patience or kshanti. That patience involves that entrusting mind. This patience is only possible if there's faith in pratitya samatpada, right? So these two things, virya or effort, 
and shanti of patience these two things are doing the exact same thing that um, that uh, dt suzuki talks about where knowing and living living becomes knowledge knowledge becomes living right these two things are happening together so the living could be the effort and the knowing could be the patience right these two things are happening together you know what is and living is the acting is the wu wei is the acting action of no action and so knowing and living effort and patience they're just the two like the two matching halves right they're happening together and the last thing i want to talk about practice is that practice is inevitable there's a quality of, of inevitable about your practice it's, it's good to have that it's like an arrow that has left the bow the arrow is already on its way master Schengen talks about it's like a train that has already left the station and it's like a mountain stream that will find the ocean of course it'll find the ocean so and that ties back to faith because only when you have faith in mind can your practice be like that and when your practice is an inevitable then your practice is effortless because the arrow has already left the bow so those are that's that's those are some pointers as to how to practice ordinary mind and i want you to have a feel for this ordinary mind it's just just ordinary no big deal it's just ordinary it's just as you are it's no different from the way you are right now it's just as you are with all of your baggage just as you are okay just as you are just as you are you are a part of the radiance of Amitabha, which is infinite. Just as you are, you are a part of the Buddha mind. Just as you are, you are the Buddha mind. It's no different from just as you are right now. Just ordinary, just as you are. All right. Okay, open to questions. Wendy, you had something to say? I, I don't know the context of your question in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. It was beautiful what you said. It's the arrow already left the the ball so i'm on my way <laughs> just have to aim towards the right direction mm -hmm. going back towards myself which i do all the time i mean like criticizing or that mm -hmm. so yeah just let things be trust trust, trust. Well, kind of hard, but I guess I have no. It choice. is hard. It is hard, but 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 knowing that that's maybe maybe th it's something that can be cultivated. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like very much your your last quote. Thanks. And thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Let me talk. To you. Oh. Sam. Oh. Um. Hey, Santa, I just wanted to say first, um, thank you so much for uh, presenting the Dharma tonight. Um, I always really appreciate that. And I did want to follow up and tell you that the last time you gave um, you gave a, a lead a lecture, uh, I asked you for advice on daily practice and meditation. And I incorporated especially reciting the Bodhisattva vows and the three jewels, things like that. And um, it has really uh, added a uh, how do you say a grounding or a 
I, I, I don't want to label it too much, but it, it feels as though my practice has been expanded upon. So uh, thank you for that. But what I did want to ask was, um, because we talk quite a bit about Patika Samupada, um, I feel like I remember Gilbert saying that the general theory is the causes and conditions never fail. And then the sp like special theory or the specific theory is the 12 links. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a, a de uh, somewhat of a seeing, a little foggy, but somewhat of a, of a seeing of the general theory, the what causes and conditions are and how they co-arise. Um, but with the 12 links, I do definitely feel a lot of confusion, especially with um, how they interact with one another and how we don't necessarily travel through them non-linearly. And then also, I just wanted to ask if there were any sources that you or anyone else here could offer for us to study or get a better uh, understanding of the 12 links. Okay, well, um, Pratitya Samutpada is very simple. It is um, what the, you know, the, you know, it, it basically is an if this, then that. If not this, then not that. That mm -hmm. that's that's basically it. That's 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 Pratitya Samutpada. Mm -hmm. And and you just listening to that, um, one of Buddha's disciples achieved enlightenment when 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 he heard it secondhand from somebody else. So it's that's the core of the Buddha's teachings. Now the Nidanas, the twelve Nidanas, is a um, more of an expansion on that on exactly how if this then that on the specifics of the if this then that and um you could try nagarjuna uh he's got uh you know he's got like a chapter on the on dependent origination in the mula madhyamaka karika that's a good that's a good place that's just a few verses it's very it's pretty awesome, awesome. yeah you yeah. you could start there and um yeah there's this is this is a topic where you know i always i don't rely on just one source and i i just keep studying like it from many perspectives i, I keep studying it's not a one and done mm. so just keep 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 studying i mean if you if you if you want to if you want to be the you know, a specialist in the 12 Nidanas. Oh, I, I don't Keep assume I'll ever, I'll ever actually be a specialist. At no, no, I'm just saying that the specialist in the sense that that's what you specialize studying. You don't have to specialize in, I don't know, calling yourself an expert. But it, this is a wonderful topic to just study and study and study. It's amazingly fruitful. It is a very helpful um, um in guiding your practice absolutely so so because you'll know that these are the particular links where you know awareness makes a big impact mm -hmm. there are a few links between which you know awareness is very practicable so um yeah so so keep studying and uh, we'll talk more. Absolutely. Thank you, Santa. You're welcome. Frank? Hey, Santa. So hey. Um, on Saturday, I was hiking and somebody made a comment after asking some questions. And uh, this comment really, you know, I didn't have a response for it. So it was just, you know, continued hiking in silence. But uh, they said that it was extremely difficult to be comfortable with being frustrated at yourself for your own failures. I, I can't, I still to this moment don't think that there's anything that I could have said other than just walking. And I wanted your thoughts on that. Well, um, So the way I would uh, handle that conversation would be like, so it looks like you really, really wanted something. Um, something was so important to you about, you know, about 
you know, the way to be, about, you know, what to do. Something is so important to you that you're really frustrated about it. So it's, it's, um, it's a, you could focus on the frustration or you can focus on what is underneath the frustration. Underneath the frustration is that something is so important to this person and that didn't quite happen. So when you can switch the focus, that's just ordinary language. When you can switch the focus, you're focusing on the suffering being. And, per, you know, uh, uh, if you can truly mourn that suffering, you can really touch the suffering. It's impossible also not to touch compassion. Yeah, get them to like accidentally practice dependent origination, shift their focus away and silently illuminate it without them doing that. Just give yeah. them a So that's a good, yeah. And then they can. Yeah, so sometimes you, you really don't want to engage in the metaphysical level. I mean, right. there's a, what's the point? It's not, it's not like let's have a debate about being frustrated versus being comfortable with frustration. Yeah. What's the point of that? Yeah. So just drive the, drive the focus to something else. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Michael? Yeah, thanks, Santa. Um, so maybe in today's talk, you you uh, often mentioned living and process, and um, so I wonder how this contrasts with uh, what uh, Gilberts often um, emphasizes that there's no life, no being. Mm. But it doesn't mean that there's no living. So the life and being are, um, I wonder if I have a, because this is something that's very interesting. And I, I, I started to make like a, an illustration. It may not be, may or may not be here. Okay. Let me share my illustration. Come on. Okay, so here are the four four things um, in the Diamond Sutra, right? The Diamond Sutra says that there is no no person, no self, no life or being. So a person is the conceptualization of the external. How do I look like to other people? Self is a conceptualization of the internal, you know, it's like, what do I think of myself as? And a being is a conceptualization of a, of the, a continuation of the past. And life is a conceptualization of continuing into the future. So that's the four. One is a in and out kind of a um, conceptualization. The other is a backwards and forwards in time kind of a conceptualization of yourself and what is common about all of this the common what's common about all of this is the conceptualization so and what needs to be let go of is the conceptualization it's so cool that i had a picture <laughs> <What's it? laughs> But, but yeah, that, that's the four, the, the tetrad, and all of them are conceptualization. And what's wrong with them is a conceptualization. It's not the knowing, it's not the living. Very cool, thanks. You're welcome. Jan? Oh, oh, 
Okay, yeah, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> very good way to, um, yeah, to to show that. Um, yeah, I, I, my question is actually short. Um, today we talk about um, uh, 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 give the trust uh, to face or mind, um, you know, uh, whatever. Um, that doesn't mean like uh, we we don't tell like for example if we uh we see something could improve um you know from our knowledge whatever <laughs> then so should we tell you know the person or something someone involved um or we just like let it go let it be and uh, just trusting it will correct itself in the future or may not be correct because it's cause and condition so right. what should we put our mind money so so what what suzuki is saying is like living and knowing right knowing is you're seeing something living is act you know doing the 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 movement of life right and in the movement of life is your movement towards helping that other person is is there is there compassion right mm -hmm. if if the movement is a movement of compassion it will be aligned with pratitya samutpada it would be aligned with um the buddha mind the workings of the buddha mind so it's that's why it's important not to not to misunderstand you know don't think of good and bad don't, you don't misunderstand as so don't make a judgment call not not a judgment call don't like deny it's not a it's not a denial right it is it's it's like looking under the good and bad it is it is it is moving towards um acting out of compassion it's recognizing the suffering that's underneath mm. right and and when you when you recognize the suffering it is the is the it's the compassionate mind that's recognizing the suffering and compassionate activity will flow from that knowing the living is is compassionate activity that flows from the knowing which is seeing the suffering and what arises will be in accordance to causes and conditions will be in in, in alignment with pratitya samadpada so we are not advocating non-activity, right? So it's not like 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 just ignore it and it'll go away. No, that's not that's not that's not what this, the teaching is about. And Chan in specific is very activity oriented. It's it's one of the hallmarks of Chan that it's 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 about everyday activity and everyday activity that is seamless, which means it's aligned with Pratitya Samadpada. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Actually, it's very encouraging. Um, um, just uh, follow up one thing. Um, so, so from where we are right now, uh, we may not be able to see all the calls, you know, to, to, to tell the, the uh, condition or, you know, um, so what should we do? Like, we just, just let's see, just see one layer deep. Just see if you can connect with the suffering. Mm. If you're working with yourself, see if you can connect with the suffering in you. See if you can connect with the suffering in that other person. And then compassion will happen and then compassionate activity will follow. So mm. that's not very hard. You just have to peel back a, a layer or so to find out. All right, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Robert. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I talked too much, but I just want to share a very short experience uh, about compassion. Uh, it, it When I first, after I learned awareness, uh, Several years ago, I, mean, I always dread certain phone call from certain people or certain requests. And, and those requests is when, when the phone rang, 
it it my my eyebrow start crossing. It's like I I don't want to hear that phone call. So, but it when you just mentioned uh, aware of the suffering of yourself and the others, uh, it I think about four years ago, I did started to aware of the other the caller the one whoever called me and and really listen attentively and felt the frustration on the other side of the telephone and and i remember how that whole experience went i repeat i reconfirm on the with the person on the phone and and i instead of looking at it at a as a pain to solve a problem i try to i, I kind of somehow uh, it, it the turning point is i started from pushing away the person into reaching forward trying to help the person and i don't feel it is a Bodhisattva kind of compassion, but but that was the turning point of trying to help the other, trying to listen and aware of the frustration on the other side. And very funny, in the coming three years after that, the relationship become just better and better and better. And into a relationship I never thought that I would be able to have with this person. Uh, so we both appreciate each other a lot. And then any prior uh, bad experience kind of melt, melt away. So, so I just want to share this experience of, of awareing of the suffering of either yourself or on the other side, whatever your eyes see, whatever your ear heard, uh, that awareness uh, helps a lot. It, 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 it kind of kindle, kindle a little light that, that, that grows slowly. It does help. It, 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 I had that experience before a long time ago. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. It's, it's like that, that beginning of that little fire, that warmth or a little drop of water that moistens the interactions and that can make a lot of difference. Thank you. Other questions, comments, shares? All right. Thank you very much. Join comms and bow. Have a good night.